You know how sometimes you'll be walking down the street and you see someone and their look just stops you in your tracks? Totally. I had that happen the other day. The guy walks by in this incredible outfit, great red boots, and a oh. like skull cuffed coat, like something out of a movie, you know? Oh, wow. And it got me thinking about first impressions and how much we say just with like what we wear. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. It's funny, this should come up because we're diving into dressing up menswear in the age of social media today. Oh, cool. Our source material is anthropologist Josh Widluto's work. Mm. He really goes deep into how men are using clothing to shape their identity in the world of Instagram, you know, with their online personas and all that. Yeah, it's like a whole different world. What's so fascinating is how Bluto goes beyond just observing. He actually becomes a participant. Yeah, he creates his own stylish online presence. Wow. To really understand what's going on. And I think that adds this whole other layer of insight to his analysis. Absolutely. It's like going undercover, but instead of a disguise, it's a wardrobe. Exactly. And speaking of which, he has this whole section on how emojis have become this kind of secret language within these online menswear communities. Oh, interesting. You've got your top hats, your scissors, like a whole code to decipher. I never would have thought about it like that. And it all ties into one of the big questions the book wrestles with, which is, what does authentic even mean when it comes to personal style, especially now in the age of social media? Such a good question. It really is. Mm -hmm. Is it about following tradition, mm -hmm. standing out as an individual, or is it something else entirely? Right. Buto argues there's often this disconnect between what people say they find authentic and what they're actually drawn to. No. It's like, are you into something because it's genuinely unique mm -hmm. or because it just looks good on your feed. Yeah. Exactly. Take Paul Harnden, for example. Have you heard of him? I haven't. He's this designer making clothes that look like they've been like buried for 100 years. Really? And people pay a fortune for them. Wow. It makes you think, what does authentic even mean anymore? Is it about the story, the process, or just looking the part? What do you think? Hmm. That's a tough one. I mean, I think it's different for everyone, right? Totally. And then you add social media to the equation where everyone's presenting this super curated version of themselves. Yeah, right. And it gets even more complex. Are those Paul Harden fans drawn to the clothing, the image it projects online, or both? Yeah. Right? It's all about the image. And to explore that further, Bluto takes us inside these very different tailoring experiences. On one hand, you have these legendary places steeped in tradition, like Geeves and Hawks on Savile Row. Have you ever been? I haven't, but I've always wanted to go. They outfitted the British military back in the day. Oh, wow. Talk about a legacy, huh. though I think it's important to acknowledge there's a conversation to be had there about colonialism and how it's woven into their history. Yeah, for sure. But anyway, Bluto describes spending time in their basement workshop. Really? Surrounded by half-finished garments. And this quiet focus on craftsmanship it sounds almost meditative. What? This focus on meticulous craft provides such a stark contrast to the spectacle of modern fashion shows, which is where he takes us next. Okay. Speaking of contrasts, the book takes us to some very different fashion shows. On one hand, you have this meticulously staged Joshua Kane show, like rock opera soundtrack, the whole nine yards, and then there's Sir Tom Baker's show where the models look like they might just break into a brawl at any moment. Such a difference. Oh, wow. It's amazing how different those two shows are, yet they're both considered high fashion. Right. It makes you realize these events are about so much more than just the clothes. Yeah, you know? really. It's like they're selling a whole vibe. You know what I mean? Totally. Like an aspirational lifestyle. Absolutely. It reminds me of that whole society of the spectacle idea. Oh, yeah. Where events are carefully crafted to kind of evoke these emotions mm -hmm. and this sense of exclusivity. Right. It's like they're practically performance art, but with a designer price tag. Yeah, totally. And speaking of performance, mm -hmm. Blue Toe doesn't just stop at the runway. He takes us into the wild world of menswear Instagram next. Oh, interesting. It's where all those ideas of authenticity and performance we were talking about earlier really start to get blurred. Right. He finds these digital tribes forming around specific aesthetics. Like what? Like there's this one group called the Other Elizabethans. Okay. And they dress like they just walked out of a Shakespearean play. Wow, really? Super dapper. Interesting. But here's where it gets really meta. Blue Toe doesn't just observe these communities. Okay. He creates his own Instagram persona, Anthro Dandy. 
He did it. He did. It's true. Uh, he even talks about having to learn the unspoken rules. Like what? You know, the headless torso shots, the artfully arranged backgrounds. Right. Even the specific emojis that signal like, I'm in the know, you know. Wow, there's so much to it. It's a whole other world. I know, I had no idea. And he learns pretty quickly that these carefully curated pictures are all part of this quest for validation. Oh, yeah. This need to, like, stand out and be recognized by other people. Right. It makes sense. It's like digital peacocking, right? <laughs> Competing for those likes and follows. and Totally. And here's the thing. It's not just about ego or <laughs> wanting to be Instagram famous, you know? Right. Blue Toe finds that these online connections can actually have real-world impact. In what way? Like, they can influence people's choices, yeah. even lead to, like, tangible outcomes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he actually uses himself as an example. Okay. So he gets Brown. a like from Joshua Kane, remember, the designer? Yeah. On one of his early posts. Okay. And that sparks this whole back and forth, yeah. which eventually leads to him buying one of Kane's coats. No way. Yeah. So it's not just likes and comments, you know what I mean? Wow. It's about how those digital interactions can actually shape our perceptions and desires and even our offline decisions right it's like a feedback loop between the online world and the offline world yeah totally and speaking of those interactions blue toe goes deep into the world of emojis which might sound kind of random yeah a little bit but it makes sense when you think about it okay because he creates this whole emoji dictionary what yeah for the menswear community like a top hat means you appreciate a certain dapper aesthetic yeah and scissors represent a tailor's like skillful cut and things like that. Oh, wow. It's interesting how those little pictures can add all this nuance and subtext. Right. Especially in a world that's so focused on visuals. Totally. It's like they've become this digital body language. Yeah. That helps us convey all those emotions and intentions that you just can't really capture with text alone. Yeah, for sure. Which makes sense because we don't have tone of voice or facial expressions. Yeah to rely on in the digital world. So okay, they kind of fill in those gaps, you know? Yeah, that's so interesting. It makes you wonder if we're developing a whole new way of communicating online. Right. Have you noticed like any unspoken emoji codes in your own online communities? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like all the time. But getting back to Buteau and the book. Yeah. Do you think he believes these online relationships are any less real than the ones we form in person? Hmm. It seems like he grapples with that a little bit in the book, you know? Right, yeah. Like, are they less valuable or just different? You know what I mean? Right. It's interesting. Yeah. He talks about this evolving relationship he has with Joshua Kane. Okay. You know, the designer. Right. And it starts with that, like, on Instagram. Okay. But then it grows into something more with shop visits. Right. And even personalized messages and things like that. Yeah. It seems like he comes to see it as this genuine connection. Right. That goes beyond... The digital, you know. Yeah. More than just meta friends, as he puts it. Yeah. There's this shared interest, this mutual influence, even a real sense of connection there. It's true. It makes you think about the nature of friendship these days. Yeah. In a world where so much of our interaction happens online. Totally. So would you say it's possible to form truly meaningful connections online? I think so. Yeah, totally. I've met so many people online through, you know, shared interests and stuff. And some of them have become really good friends. Right. It might start digitally, but it can definitely become something real. Yeah. It's not always easy, though, and it's not all, you know, sunshine and roses. Bluto acknowledges that these online spaces can have their downsides, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of pressure to yeah. present this perfect image. Oh, yeah. And that can lead to, you know, judgment, competition, even anxiety. Totally. He even talks about how Instagram itself yeah. censors certain types of content, which is a whole other conversation. Like, who gets to decide what's okay and what's not? And how much control do we really have over our online identities? It's complicated. Definitely. It makes you think, are we sacrificing some of our true selves in this quest for likes and validation? That's a good question. It's like that tension that Bluto keeps coming back to between wanting to be authentic and feeling like we have to perform a certain way. Exactly. And it's interesting how he brings it all together with that story about the houndstooth coat. Oh, right. The one from Joshua Kane. Yeah. He talks about buying that coat like it was this spiritual experience. He really does. Well, maybe not spiritual, yeah. but he really lingers over the details. The fabric, the smell, the craftsmanship. Right, right. It becomes this symbol of his whole journey, you know? Yeah. 
all of those digital interactions and aspirations, they kind of materialize in this physical object. It's like it grounds him. Exactly. It brings him back down to earth. And it reminds us that clothing can hold so much meaning. It's true. It's not just about appearances or how many likes you get on Instagram. Totally. It's about memories, connections, experiences. Exactly. If you had to pick one item in your closet that holds the most meaning for you, what would it be? <sighs> That's a tough one. Um, I have this old watch that my grandfather gave me. It's pretty beat up, but it reminds me of him every time I wear it. Oh, that's nice. It's amazing how clothing can do that, you know? Mm. Like, each piece has a story to tell. Totally. Well, that about wraps up our deep dive into the world of menswear and social media. It was fascinating. It really was. We talked about everything from bespoke tailoring to digital peacocking, secret emoji codes, to the search for authenticity online. It makes you think. It really does. Hopefully this has given you a new perspective on the clothes you wear, the image you project, the stories you tell both online and offline. Until next time.